An introduction to developmental disability. Developmental disabilities are common. The latest prevalence studies suggest one in six children are diagnosed with at least one developmental disability. Timely diagnosis is paramount to instituting the appropriate treatment and optimizing the child's developmental trajectory. Now, let's start with a case that illustrates a common scenario. A 15-month-old boy presents to his pediatrician's office for a health supervision visit. His parents have concerns about his development. They report he pulls to stand, babbles, and understands simple commands, while he's still working on walking independently, saying his first words, and making consistent eye contact. On exam, he's noted to have a low axial and appendicular tone, but no focal neurological deficits are seen. What are the best next steps for this patient? Developmental disabilities are a group of conditions that represent a deviation from typical development in mobility, communication, or learning, and ultimately result in functional impairment. Specific examples include cerebral palsy, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, autism spectrum disorder, learning disorders, or intellectual disability. There are three steps to evaluate for these conditions. Step one is surveillance. This is performed longitudinally at each preventative care visit. The pediatrician inquires about risk factors, including pregnancy and delivery complications, prior head trauma or brain infection, presence of chronic medical conditions, and family history of developmental disabilities. A physical examination and observation for expected milestones is also an important part of surveillance. Step two is screening. This is performed by physical exam extenders, such as a hearing screen in the newborn nursery, or with a validated caregiver form at preventative care visits. An example of this is the Modified Checklist for Autism in Toddlers, or MCHAT. This is a 20-item questionnaire utilized at 18 and 24-month preventative care visits as a screening tool for autism. If surveillance and screening are concerning for a developmental disability, then the provider will move on to step three which is evaluation. Consultation with specialists, including neuropsychologists and developmental pediatricians, are required for this step as they can institute standardized testing for formal diagnoses. For example, the Autism Diagnostic Observation Schedule, or ADOS, is the gold standard for the diagnosis of autism. This is a 40 to 60 minute semi-structured interview where communication and behaviors of a child are assessed. Following the diagnosis of a developmental disability, an etiology will help families further understand the condition and find a support community. Frequently, a thorough history and physical examination will reveal the underlying etiology. In cases where this is less clear, a brain MRI or genetic testing is pursued. Physical exam findings that should prompt brain imaging include microcephaly, focal weakness, spasticity, or ataxia neurocutaneous signs, or a history of seizures. While historically serum metabolic testing was pursued, we have learned that comprehensive gene panels or whole exome sequencing are of higher yield. Now, let's get back to our case. From his preventative care visit, our patient was referred to subspecialists where he was diagnosed with global developmental delay and autism spectrum disorder. Genetic testing ultimately revealed a unifying diagnosis of chromosome 15Q duplication syndrome. Through appropriate use of medications and tremendous work with his support network, he has made consistent progress and is now a thriving six-year-old. For more information on this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com neurobites.